Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports, brought to you by KillCliffCBD.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. D'Anthony, are you drinking a health shake? No. No? No, this is uh, White Claw, my man. <laughs> Sprite Claw, as a matter of fact, I figured out uh, using basic human intelligence that this is 24 and those are 12. Double that. Boom. Equals this. Yeah. Sprite Claw. And it looks like I'm healthy, too. Look at you. Like, people are like, oh, this guy's really taking care of himself. You're goddamn right I am. He's fit. I'm taking care of myself by drinking during the day because life is completely fucked. I love, love the fact that you're just walking the streets of Austin with uh, a smoothie bottle filled with White Claw. Yeah. Nothing makes my heart happier. No uh, one questions you. Like, no. a, you're not going to get pulled over drinking out of this. Like, if a cop pulls up next to you. Even if you've been driving like an idiot, you're drinking out of this. He's like, yeah, <laughs> he's just an asshole. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Um, my heart deserves to be happy, Dan. Mm. It does. It does. There is a rumor that the Big Ten football season might be back as soon as this Friday. Um, I don't know. I could be grabbing at straws here. Uh, but, um, there's, there's some sources that have said that, uh, Friday is, is when they're going to announce and that the season will start October 2nd and or third. Who are these sources? You ask a child, a child on Twitter that apparently us and, uh, Barstool sports are trusting. Yeah. His name is Sir Yacht. Um, and I'll give him a shout out now because if he is correct on this, um, Everybody has been kind of piggybacking off of this one dude yeah. who is uh, alleged to have a source within the Big Ten that says um, that they're they're going to play this season. <sighs> we'll have them on the show. Stuff, we'll like, the show. stuff like that happens sometimes. Uh, organizations, businesses, particularly when it comes to the stock market or political candidates when it comes to gauging interest in uh, what the support or, or uh, you know, lack of support or maybe somebody's angry about something happening right mm -hmm. so you just kind of leak it through you can't leak it through the new york times because then people will know it's true right right so you leak it through some knucklehead not that this guy's a knucklehead but you leak it through somebody that's not part of the msm yeah and you see what the reaction is and then you decide what your actual course of action is going to be like for example biden leaked two weeks ago that mm -hmm. it was going to be kamala harris yep i i guarantee not him because he's sucking his thumb in a basement somewhere uh and has no idea where he is, but his team certainly leaked that shit. And then people's reaction were what they were. They decided that, well, this is tolerable. We can live with this. And they move forward with the thing. I think this is probably like that because I've heard it from people other than that guy that it looks like the Big Ten is going to rejoin and the Pac-12 is not. Yeah. Um, and look, that's what we're hearing here. I, I don't know if that's true or not. I know all the parents of the Big Ten um, have written letters and they're going to show up at uh, the Big Ten headquarters on Friday. Yeah. Um, joined and uh, look, it, it doesn't help their case any that uh, Governor DeWine out of Ohio has just announced um, that high school football will, will be allowed to be played in the state of Ohio. So that means all fall sports will also be playing in the state of Ohio and not Ohio State football. I, I have a hard time believing that that is going to hold up, uh, especially since the other conferences have, have hung in there. The other part about this, Dan, is um, this saliva testing uh, that has just been approved from the, the FDA that the NBA is using. Um, I don't know why colleges won't be using that as well. And uh, I think they... Maybe they can't afford it. I don't know. I, I think they will probably. Um, but I, I think that's uh, homeboy Kevin... You fuck who's the the Big Ten commissioner, this fucking guy. Um, boy, Kevin Warren is his name. Uh, he's got a kid that is the running back for Mississippi State. Mississippi State is in the SEC. They're playing, yet he shuts down the entire Big Ten mm. football season. Um, I think this is purely political. There was an article dug up on him uh, that he did with Yahoo!, about six or seven months ago. And he was hired four months ago where he's just, you know, railing on people to go out and vote. And we got to get rid of Trump and all this other shit. Um, here's the thing. President Trump has been very, very vocal that he wants college football to be played. Yeah. It's he funny how anything it's, it's almost like the, 
We used to call it blame Bush, then it became blame Obama. And now it's Trump derangement syndrome. But right. people are so stupid that anything bad in their life that happens, it's like, oh, fucking, fucking Obama, fucking Trump. Like this. No, dude. No. The problem no. with it is if you were trying to make this a political uh, move, Kevin Warren, um, it backfired because people in Ohio love fucking football. Look, people in Ohio and Michigan have nothing to live for except for football. It is gray there 300 days out of the year. Yes. And uh, this is it. You saw man. it in Sad Boy Fall last year. Oh, yeah. Episode we recorded from the park in, yep. uh, in uh, Columbus. Here. Perfect example. Was that Columbus? Yeah, Columbus, yeah. Ohio. Um, it's like that there 300 days out of the year. We have nothing to live for there except for football. This is a, a colossal mistake, and he's getting fucking hammered right now. And uh, as well, he should. I mean, yes, obviously. And I hope. Look, I hope this gets overturned. Um, and let's face it: if Ohio <laughs> State wasn't number two in the nation in those pre-rankings that came out a week ago, uh, I don't know if anyone would care. Because certainly, no one cares about the Pac-12. No one has brought up reinstating the Pac-12 whatsoever. And um, I feel like everybody already <gasps> has has resigned to the fact that. Uh, those are all democratic states and governors and all mm -hmm. that shit. And they're like, let's face it. They're not coming back. They're not doing shit right now. <coughs> um, there's a mass exodus from LA and San Francisco yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. They got bigger fish to fry than to worry about uh, a, a football conference that doesn't compete for national. It is interesting though, that, uh, the two Michigan teams were kind of protesting the idea of not playing, but Whitmer is, uh, as liberal as it gets and yeah. dumb too. Yeah. Not just like standard left-leaning politics, but she's dumb as shit. So who knows? Yeah. So we'll see. Um, <coughs> there's uh, an attorney here, uh, Bill Rabinowitz. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I know he works for the Columbus dispatch. Rabinowitz. Um, there we go. Uh, which is, uh, look, it's, it's probably the biggest newspaper in Ohio. Mm -hmm. I, I would say, but behind the, uh, the plain dealer, um, he's saying here on Twitter, an attorney I respect who long worked inside college football programs predicts that the pressure from the parents, players, and some schools will result in the Big Ten reconsidering its cancellation of fall sports. I agree. Look, this all started uh, maybe three or four days ago with Justin Fields doing a petition online. It has since gained about 300,000 signatures. Obviously, he's the quarterback of Ohio State um, and one of the favorites to win the Heisman Trophy. If he's able to bring back Ohio State football, uh, not only will he win the Heisman, I'll predict it right now. He won the Heisman in some form of statue, mm -hmm. will be built outside mm -hmm. the stadium in his honor. Um, my dick's a little hard over this news um, because I love college football more than life itself. Watching the SEC schedule come out the other day, it hurt way, way down deep inside. Um, cause you know, those, those dirty motherfuckers are playing. Um, we should all be playing. Look, all sports should be playing. Um, the NBA has had zero positive tests. The NHL has had zero positive tests. Let's let these fucking kids play, man. Because let's face it, man. There's about 10 draft picks on Ohio state's team alone. Uh, Justin Fields would probably go number two, two in the There's draft probably line. probably more than that. Well, I don't know. Trevor Lawrence. Ten, ten or 12, somewhere in that Yeah, range, I, th right? I think nine went to the draft last year. It's a lot of money. And I know what you're saying. Hey, man, these are college kids. We shouldn't mix business in there as well. No, dude, you go to college to get a great paying job. And if your great paying job just so happens to be the NFL, congratulations, <laughs> dude. Uh, you win in this life. So I don't want to see these kids lose millions of dollars. I don't want to see anything happen to these recruits either. Uh, bring the fucking football back, Kevin. You fuck. Um, man, I'm fired up about it. Uh, I want to see it go down. And I want to see the best teams compete for a championship. And I feel like if the Big Ten gets, gets back in this, the conferences that matter will be represented and be able to, to play for a national championship right. without anybody <clears throat> bitching. Um, because I did read a lot of articles about people bitching of like, will this really count? It, you and I did a show about it last week. Will this really count if Ohio State's not in it and blah, 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 because they're, they're number two. And yeah. uh, in my opinion, yes, if, if the Big Ten does not play, play on. Play on and whoever wins, wins. I mean, I'm with it, Dabo Sweeney on this one. It's, it's, they, have, they get to decide whether or not they play. If it wasn't the... If the decision wasn't solely in their hands then i might feel differently but it is solely in their hands so you as a conference and look we've found out over the last two weeks that the conferences have immense power yeah. outside of the ncaa's ability to regulate or control it 
Yep. The conferences have all the power in college football. So they have all the power in the world they need to make this shit happen. Yep. And if it doesn't happen, it's because of them. And you can't blame the rest of the world for that. No. This is the way it is. Uh, you can blame Kevin, though. You can blame Kevin Warren. And uh, I must have burned his house down. I'm glad I didn't, Dan. No. Can't do that. Um, no, you don't want to say the wrong thing on air. For example, Charlotte Hornets uh, broadcaster John Falk. Uh, Falk? F-O-C-K-E. That's an unfortunate name. After Monday's playoff game um, between the Nuggets and the Jazz, says he was trying to type the word Nuggets and he typed a different word that starts with an N. Ah, you don't say. Now, Does it I, have two Gs in it as well? Yes, it does. I understand how predictive text works. And look, it's that word is not in Android <laughs> or iPhone's database. It only happens when you set it. Like that's learned. And it take, you have to type something like that a lot. A lot of times. For the in, keyboard yeah. to learn it, this yep, guy's yep, done yep, yep. forever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> he's been suspended indefinitely. But only until they can do an investigation and fire him, and he will never work in this industry again. No, no. So here's a here's a good rule of thumb: don't use that word ever. Don't type it. <laughs> don't say it even in the fucking like. Dig a hole in the ground, oh. bury yourself in a coffin, shield it with lead, and then maybe rattle off a few. What do you think? Fifty times? You probably have to write that in fifty times before it's it got to be twenty to text. fifty, yeah, yeah. somewhere yeah. in that range. Yeah, because I still have to like. I get pissed off because I'm typing something like, you know exactly what the fuck I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Uh, and that maybe, maybe that's what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. Here, it's not like it wasn't in context. <laughs> it was clear that he was trying to type nuggets. Sure. That's not the problem. The problem is that he had to teach his phone that anything with N and G's in it is the N word. Yeah. This guy's a, probably not a great dude. Yeah, probably not in real life. <laughs> um, speaking of the nuggets, NBA playoffs. Are in full swing right now. Oh yeah, now. I'm watching right now. Yeah, and uh, we're, the Bucks. We're drinking. Uh, Bucks are playing live right now. Um, they are. We're recording right around the 4 p.m. ish. They are range not here. Winning. Uh, the Bucks. <laughs> no, they're uh, no. The Bucks are by down. 12. Oof. They're replaying the magic. They're replaying a foul call right now. I don't think it was a foul. They're down by 12 to the Magic with about five minutes left to go. 501 left. It's 109.97. This is a one versus eight seed. Um, look, if you or a member of Drinking Bros Sports on Facebook. It's a private group. Anyone can sign up. Um, just don't be a cunt is the only rule to it. You will know mm -hmm. that I rolled all of my UFC winnings from Saturday nights into one of the biggest NBA bets of all time. Um, I am taking, D'Anthony, the Portland Trailblazers in Dame time uh, to upset LeBron James and the Lakers in the first round. I bet one thousand dollars on that. Um, it is a four to one spread in that, and uh, the odds are not in my favor. But uh, I I feel like Dame, it's Dame Lillard's time. LeBron James looks old, and I think he's done. He might be. Yeah, uh, um, but um, everybody has said, "Hey, man, that's crazy. That's fucking crazy." I think the Blazers are hot, man, and I enjoy watching them play. Um, also, let's face it. Is Melo going to get another shot in the playoffs again? He's not. Well, he might next year. I think he'll play another year, but he's he looks pretty good right now. Looks great. That whole team looks good, to be honest. McCollum, CJ McCollum, <laughs> all those guys, man. So I'm all in. That game is on tonight. Uh, it's a five-game series. So anything can happen, and there is no home. Uh, there is no home court advantage. Right. So anything can happen. Uh, who do you got in that one, D'Anthony? In uh, the Lakers? Mm -hmm. I think the Lakers take it in five, to be honest, but I think it's close. All right. And I think uh, the second round is where things start to become a problem. But look, I mean, everybody had a chance to get back in shape over eight games or whatever it was. Um, so that's not an excuse, in my opinion. Everybody should be on the same kind of like, except for those teams that had guys that were out due to COVID for a number of days or whatever the case is. Um, but... <sighs> We will see these first two games with Portland. Yeah. If it's a struggle for the Lakers, I think the entire playoffs are going to be a struggle for them. I, I, I don't think they get out of the first round. I've gone all in. By the way, go to mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros. Double your deposit and bet with me or against me. Um, but I'm look, it's, it's four to one odds. I put $1,000 on it. That's how confident I am. <clears throat> the Portland Trailblazers are going to upset... Los Angeles. LeBron looks old. 
and he looks slow. I don't, I'm not buying the bullshit that it, he's not used to not playing in front of fans and all that other stuff. He just looks old and slow. And in this bubble, it feels like a college type environment. Mm-hmm. And I feel like mm-hmm. these younger guys are thriving in it. And, uh, I, I don't know. LeBron looks like their fucking grandfather. So, um, I went all in, man. It's a, it's a big boy bet. And I understand if you don't come along, uh, for that ride. With no, me. I, I, I think there's a good chance that, uh, that they get upset, but I don't think it, I don't think it was going to happen. Okay. It's just, there's, there's a lot of talent on that team. Uh, look, they don't even, it, let's say LeBron wasn't even on that team. That's still a pretty good fucking team. You know what I mean? That's a team that could win a first round playoff series without him, in my opinion. Maybe. Uh, so, I mean, with Anthony Davis and Kyle Kuzma, you can win a series. With yeah, yeah, guys. yeah. No. So I like, <clears throat> we'll see. It depends on, it's not, it's not enough to say that though. Cause there's no, look, there's no transitive property in sports. And this whole mix match of like, well, if we just done this, it doesn't work that way. It's about chemistry and all that other bullshit. So you never know. Maybe LeBron being on the court, though, and the shape that he's in, not physical shape, but like his age is clogging shit up. Or maybe it affects them in a negative way. Maybe they'd be even better without him on the court, which is crazy to say because he's one of the top two or three players of all time. Depending on well, how you rank that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's Jordan, him, and Kobe, probably the most the best player of all time. I'll go Jordan, Kobe. I'll go Jordan, Kobe. Um, that's that's where my balls lie at. If you include the mental aspect of the game, LeBron's not even in the conversation, no. in my opinion. No. Uh, he, he's, he's weak-minded, obviously. Because every time something happens, there's some kind of excuse for it, like we're, we're seeing now. Yeah. Like, how, how fucking dare you? Re, like remake Space Jam and then complain that you can only play in front of fans. Yeah. Like that is weak bullshit. That's not what the NBA leader is supposed to talk like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because now he just gave everybody in the league a fucking opt out. He should not have remade or cop Space out, Jam. No, um, he shouldn't. I don't want to see LeBron James in any films whatsoever. And uh, if you wanted to try to be Jordan a little harder. You should have won your championships. Yeah. Oh, boy. Jordan 6-0. I mean, one of them that you won only happened because you taunted uh, Draymond Green. And look, that was a smart move. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Getting Draymond thrown out of the game was smart. It was. Um, and they, they were able to come back and win that series. Yeah. Seven, big boy win, and that's fine. But uh, what is he, three and five or three and six in the finals? Uh, th- three and five. He would have been three and six if, if they had made it last year, but it was the yeah, Raptors, well, right? Too bad. Too bad for LeBron. I think he's out in the first round. Uh, Denver looks pretty goddamn good. And man, I, look, there's three minutes and thirty seconds left in this Magic game against the Bucks. Uh, this no, is, it is three and six. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, three and six. Mm, um, this is great. a uh, this is a a one eight seed as well. And and the Magic <laughs> looked like they're going to win this game. They're up by ten with three and a half to go. Um, uh, these are fun games to bet on, man. Go to mybookie.com promo code Drinking Bros. We'll double your deposit on that. The NHL playoffs have started those have been a blast to watch as well and uh my bets are placed um i was surprised at uh at how many sleepers looked pretty good for me um denver was one of my picks yeah yeah denver looked good actually dallas looked pretty good last night but that whole luca thing, like he's he's on he's, my god man he, he's very very good we'll see what how mentally tough he is and he, like how does he respond to losing game one What's he come back with? Look, he's still... This he is 42 last night. This you is know, his second year in the league. So it's not like... Remember, Jordan was in the league at 84. Yeah. And he didn't win shit until 1990. No. Like, they were getting... Look, they became successful. They were in the playoffs every year. They got whipped by the Knicks every year. Yeah. Like, or, or not the Knicks, the Pistons every year. And then finally, when he got some help, he started, you know, succeeding and shit. Um, so we're, we're judging Luca very young in his career, but he's already really fucking good yeah man and i all i kept thinking last night as i was watching that game was holy shit the atlanta hawks traded him um yeah now yeah. i love trey young and i think he's awesome but it's not even a comparison it, 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 luca Honestly. looks like he could be one of the like the greatest players of all time he's gonna be i the, know it's super early to say now that now he, he's you can tell he's gonna it's it's the way he handles the ball the way he can score the way he leads his team. Yep. Like the fact that Porzingis, who's been in the league for a little while mm-hmm. and is actually kind of new to that team, like he's been around for about 20 months now or so with the team, but he's only played the last couple of games yeah, because he's been hurt and whatever the fuck else COVID was happening. Still when, and this speaks to Porzingis' character as well, but still when fucking 
three dudes tried to jump up in Luca's face. Porzingis is in there lighting their asses up. And that's what you do for players like fucking Kobe, for Jordan, for fucking Sidney Crosby a lot. He got yeah. protected for Wayne Gretzky. Like you see it in basketball and hockey. Your fucking star players getting pr- protected. Everybody in Dallas knows this guy's special. Yeah. Right. And everybody on the other team knows too because they're trying to provoke him. So it's, I, I think he might end up being one of the top. 10 or 15 players in NBA history. If he he might, man. The, he's the, got, way, the way that he... He's got that trout type athletic ability. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just like, he doesn't... When I say that, I mean, if you see trout in street clothes, you can tell he's jacked up. And in mm-hmm. a baseball uniform, he just looks like a dude. Yeah. He, but he's he's jacked the fuck up. Luca's the same kind of guy. He's He looks unassuming, but man, that guy can play. He's too fast for how big he is. He's great. He's too big for how fast and, and how much he can jump. So yeah. None of it makes any sense, and those are just anomalies. You can't. Jerry West said that he was uh, genius with a basketball. He's very. That's the other thing too. And he's how many not on the Hawks? How many of those players <laughs> have come out of whatever league they were in, whether it's Europe or uh, college, and their basketball IQ was the first thing, but then you remember like oh this guy's also great physically yeah, yeah, yeah. like lebron james is one of them obviously yeah, yeah. when he first came into the league i was like man this guy is a man yeah. he's, he's 17 well we, even when we were watching him play for the fucking irish he was 15 16 is like this is a man playing against children and right his now. his games were on espn yeah, every single game was on espn but he was his ability to read the court and make passes it didn't matter who was on the court and people said that like it, it won't matter who was on the court and everyone's like, yeah, whatever. Then he got the NBA and immediately succeeded. Yeah. He, he, I think Luca was, I mean, obviously last year proved it. Luca was like that. Yeah. And the sky's the limit for those guys. Stay healthy. Don't be a fucking asshole and you'll fucking win. Yeah, man. Uh, it's, it's fun to see. Um, he, he's a fun player to watch. I, I don't know. Look, Trey Young is great. I, I just don't know what's going to happen with him. And if, you know, he can't shoot 50 shots a game, does he put up as many points? Well, we'll see. He can. Uh, We'll see. Um, I think you should, to be honest. I mean, do you remember that um, <clears throat> during the second year that, uh, or the third year, third year that Curry broke his own record, the, the year he had like 410 threes or whatever, mm-hmm. and nobody else has even got to 300 other right. than Clay Thompson, I think, like in the history of the NBA. It's yeah, yeah, only yeah. like two people have 300. He's got four in one season. All this information, this is when people finally started paying attention to the true sh- shooting percentage stat, mm-hmm. and him shooting the ball from 30 feet out was more efficient than a mid-range jump shot from any other player in the NBA. Yeah. Think about that for a minute. So him shooting the ball from seven feet behind the three-point line was more efficient scoring-wise than any other person in the league shooting from 15 to 18 feet. And by the way, that's, that's what's crazy happening as fuck. to Dame Lillard right now. Oh, yeah. He's on fucking fire. In, in, in the bubble. And they're saying, you know, these shots are between 30 and 40 feet. And it's just... <laughs> it's- I mean, he's shooting from the logo. It's, it, look, it's it's a blast to watch. Man. Yeah, it's been it. a blast to bet on. New shit like that makes the game more exciting too. Like seeing a European kid that doesn't fit those molds. Like, I mean, he's uh, Luca's basically the white Giannis. Like they're extremely gifted, but they played in Europe, which is they they actually continue to prioritize fundamental basketball. And LeBron James is the same guy. Like he knew that it wasn't enough to just be physically talented he right. knew he had to learn how to play fucking basketball yeah and that's what separates the the really good from the fucking all-time great so you i mean just by that pattern you can tell that he was gonna be an all-time great and i think trey young if he can get some support around him that dude can fucking make some noise like I, he I, I think so it's just he's man. a dame lillard type of guy yeah i we'll, we'll see what happens um but uh it's hard not to watch luca and 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 wonder what Ooh. Could have been. Uh, by the way, breaking news: Celtics Gordon Hayward is out for four weeks with yeah. an ankle sprain. Man, that guy can't catch a fucking break. No, I, and and I think the Celtics are done. This Orlando game is over, man. They're down by sixteen with uh, under two to play here. Yeah, so Orlando was... as an eight seed is going to beat the Bucks. Uh, game one, no one had that on my bookie. I can promise you that they just drilled a three. Yeesh. But I don't know who the player is because the doesn't matter. The name on the back of his jersey is Justice. Yeah. Yep. 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 And it's not Justice Winslow. I'll be real curious to see these NBA ratings, especially after <laughs> LeBron's ousted. There'll be about four people watching. Yeah. Same as well, the uh, the Democratic convention. Uh, I want to chat about the UFC on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stipe uh, won, as I predicted. How did you think that fight was? I thought it was a pretty good fight other than those, those eye gouges. 
on both people, by the way, I know yeah. DC got pops in the eye and I know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, fucking, you know, steep, a got pops in the eye once. Um, but both seem to be intentional to me. <laughs> here's me personally, here's what I want to, here's what I want to say about that. I don't care about this fight. I thought, uh, I thought DC kind of phoned it in a little bit, frankly. Didn't look like he was in I don't when I say good shape, I don't mean like he's always had a gut and he always will. He was in terrible shape, but, yeah, uh, but he looked like he he was not aggressive in any way, and you have to be against Stipe. Stipe will take those fucking jabs to the face all day. Yeah. He'll take those jabs. You can punch him in the face all day. You gotta knock this motherfucker out. Or you gotta put him on the ground and fucking use your superior gold winning or gold medal winning Olympic skill to fucking beat him. He yeah. didn't, he didn't want to take him to the ground either. That to me, that's lazy. Like I know that Anik and, Cor- and DC are great friends and we're great friends with Anik, but there's no, and I, and I'm DC's a good dude. I, no question about that. I just didn't, I was not impressed by his performance. The eye gouge thing fucked him up and look at maybe, but because it was late. That was late in the fights. It was. Know? Yeah. And, and the fourth round DC is one of those guys who is in a couple of his fights has kind of waited to pour it on at the end. Mm -hmm. That is a strategy, but it's one that is fraught with peril because if you don't, like if something happens in the early rounds that fucks you over and you can't do that, you can't come on strong at the end. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what happened here. He got poked in the eye and he couldn't fucking see, at least according to him. There was a a guy in Drinking Bros Sports, a, a listener, Brady Lyons is his name. I'll give him a shout out. He wanted to go against me. Uh, on the card and he said look man i know uh, more about ufc than both of you could be true who knows uh i will say this i've been on fucking fire in ufc bets this year uh, including that steep a victory and um he had picked dc mm-hmm. and he said look man if i'm able to to outpick you can i come on the show next time you guys do a ufc show and uh and be on same way that zach Hurd was on for for the hockey show i go absolutely Make your card public in uh, Drinking Bros Sports. I'll make my bets public, which I, we always do. Uh, so you can actually see who we're actually betting on and the dollar amounts. Because um, I put 500 on that uh, over in the DeSantos fights. Yeah. And uh, that thing came home uh, by a minute and 26 seconds, baby. Um, but I said, you, you got to pick the Stipe Cormier fight, my man. And uh, he will not be on the show. Mm-hmm. So apologies to you um, for coming mm-hmm. after me. Uh, I am the very best, and you should not bet against me. So I want—I guess I just want to see Stipe fight somebody that can actually knock him out. So who is that? That's my next question. Who, who does Stipe fight next? Uh, probably Francis Ngannou again, right? That's like he's fought him before. Hey, buddy. My dogs are here. Oh, look at that. Hello, Morty. So we're shooting from Dan's uh, brand new condo here in downtown Austin. Yeah. And uh, we're live. Jesse what? just let the dogs out. So if you were wondering who let the dogs out. It was... It was Jesse. Jesse, that Jesse song, let the dogs out. That yeah. song this whole time was about her, apparently. Yeah, yeah. So, Jesse, um, if you want to grab the dogs, you can feel free. But they'll, um, they'll lie down eventually. Um. <laughs> They're fine. Um, so, yeah, that was a good one. I think Stipe is going to fight Ngannou next. Um, That'd be a great fight. It'll be a great fight. And Ngannou is not the same fighter he was early in his career when Stipe fought him before. Yeah. So, this one's going to be a little bit different. But look, Stipe can – he's – there's a lot of heavyweights out there, and heavyweights punch hard, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there, but there are a lot of heavyweights out there, big dudes, and Giorgio can tell you about this as well because he's a big UFC guy or a big MMA guy. A lot of them can't take a punch. There's a lot of glass jaws in the heavyweight division, and right. that's why a lot of guys just don't make it. Like, you see a guy, and he's like, man, this guy's fucking massive. He's ripped. He's fast as fuck, and he gets tapped one time he's out. Yeah. You know what I mean? He just can't take it. So I think Ngannou is a guy that can take a punch, and Stipe is a guy that can take a punch, and that is a dangerous combination in a heavyweight fight with two guys that are that skilled and that large. Like, Stipe is a true heavy. He's a big motherfucker. And you don't need to talk about how big Ngannou is. Yeah. He's massive. I, I, I think Ngannou wins that fight, and I hope it happens because I'd love to see it. Do you remember um, that game in 97 fight. when Mark McGuire connected with that high inside fastball or that high fastball out over the plate? from Randy Johnson because people have been talking like what if McGuire squared up a fucking fastball from yeah. Randy Johnson well it was 500 feet that's what happened yeah I want to see a 500 foot punch to the face from one of these heavyweights that's what I want to see and I think that fight I mean shit that's a big fight people will watch that one. Oh, I'm I'm way um, down for that um, yeah we'll see we'll see if they I, I think they'll schedule that one next I'm is it a rematch 
Yeah, yeah they fought early he, in his career. And yeah, Stipe, Stipe won. won yeah. and, but I, I just and Ghana was just getting started. He like, wasn't a fighter then. He no. was a big dude that was trying to learn how to fight. And I think he can. I, I think he would win that fight. But I, I'd love to see it. Uh, I don't me know. Me personally, Stipe, Stipe is very stubborn. Yeah, I, like, look, I, I still think Ghana would win, and I, it'd be a blast. But um, uh, the Sean O'Malley fight was a disappointment. Not because of Sean, obviously. I mean, look, it's a risk to take as well when you throw that many leg kicks because even uh, even Vera talked about it in the post fight. He's like, yeah, I throw a lot of leg kicks too, and sometimes my feet get fucked up. It yeah. sucks. Um, it I don't was know. an injury he lost. He was a heavy favorite. Yeah, um, I mean, it's what, who was the guy that had that uh, injury before? Michael Chandler, yeah. yeah. He so a lot of lot of snapping leg kicks early in the fight. Some nerve damage happened. His leg goes numb, and it kind of looks like you know when you're fucking sitting Indian style or something. Your leg goes numb. You try to walk. It's all fucked up. When you watch O'Malley try to fucking pounce forward, he's getting ready to throw a left jab and come across with that fucking right foot again, mm -hmm. probably high for the knockout. You can see him roll over on his toes right there. Yeah. And I don't like, that's not an athletic move and it's not what we expect from a, how, what is he, 24 years old? No, or some shit? I, it was clearly some form of nerve damage Yeah, I think or his something. foot was numb. Yeah, right same. There. And after that, like he knew he it, just he just rolled onto that, his back. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Like he tried to fight for another couple of minutes and he rolled onto his back. It's like, all right, let's just get this done. Yeah. Cause there's no point. Um, You're not going to beat a guy like Mario Vera. Say what you want. O'Malley healthy probably beats him, but Marlon Vera is a goddamn animal. He's never going to quit. No. If there's a sliver of fucking fingernail left, he'll fucking try to cut you and give you an infection so AIDS. you die later. Just try to give you AIDS. I yeah. think that's a, a Adam Ferrara joke, actually. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Um, by fans. the way, the uh, Magic th that is going final, they've beat the Bucks in, uh, <laughs> in game one. That's an eight seed over a one seed. I'm telling you, the, I, uh, I honestly think... Game. Not to jump around Oof. from NBA to UFC, but I think that, and uh, Zach Hurd will appreciate this reference, but I think that the the Milwaukee Bucks are the Tampa Bay Lightning of the NBA. I think they're really fucking talented. Very good. <laughs> very, very good in the regular season and maybe in the first round or two, but once they get to the real games, they fucking collapse. I, I, I think that they will go to the finals. I still have I still have the Bucks in the finals. I would have said Celtics until today, but now that Gordon Hayward's out, I don't know. No. No, I, I think they're uh, they're all done uh, now that Gordon Hayward is out. Um, also, uh, breaking news here: uh, Drew Pearson, uh, finalist for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Look, let's put Drew in. I think he's like the last remaining mm -hmm. fucking Cowboy receiver um, that hasn't gone in yet. So. Uh, let's put them in. It's, it's time. It's time to put them in. Uh, we get some sponsors here real quick, and then uh, we'll get to the other fucking bigness of the day. Bigly. Bigness. Uh, first and foremost, KillCliffCBD.com. Best in the biz, man. I had some uh, last night. I, t I told you I took it in my car from North Carolina. Yeah, I, I brought a case as well. Did you really? Yeah. Man. Like, I, I ordered two more uh, two days ago, so they'll be here tomorrow or, or uh, Thursday, but... Yeah, I absolutely brought at least one case with me when I travel. Promo code Drinking Bros uh, will get you twenty percent off and free shipping. Twenty five milligrams of CBD in every single can. Uh, grape is my favorite, but they got uh, orange Kush and mango. Uh, best in the biz, kids. If you're doing uh, drinkable CBD, that's that's it. Uh, those guys are the best doing it, and uh, there is no THC in there, so you will not piss hot if you have to take drug tests out there. It's great for joints and pains, and uh, fuck, man. It's great with vodka. Uh, that'll really get the day going for you. Go to KillClipCBD.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros Get you 20% off and free shipping. Next up, we got GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. 30% off if you're a member of the military or first responder or a teacher working the government. If you're a regular civilian like myself, you get 25% off. And as always, uh, well, not always, but but for now, uh, you order a mattress, you get two free pillows, 36 months. Pay as you go program, no interest on that. So all of those deals I, I just mentioned are applicable with a 36 month uh, pay as you go program with no interest on that. So you can get a whole bundle package with the adjustable base and all that shit for like 30, 30 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Damn, son, get on it. So go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Uh, next up, D'Anthony, um, mybookie.com. Promo code drinking bros will double your deposit, uh, whatever that is, man. So 
If you're betting, which we all are at this point, NBA playoffs are going on. NHL is going on playoffs wise. Uh, MLB, man, some you got some junkies betting on MLB still. Um, I'm not one of them. I won't go singular MLB. I'm one games. of the best um, baseball gamblers of all time. Love and I don't, know, I don't know why it is, but I wouldn't. I, I don't necessarily recommend it for everybody. But if you find little niches that you're good at gambling, like yeah. pe- people are like, we, we talked about this the other day. When people see a UFC fight, they're like, oh, this guy's obviously going to beat that guy. Yeah, right. that's true. But there's all this other shit to gamble on. Is he going to knock him out in the first round? What's the over under the time going to be? All this other shit. Right? Yeah. Come on. There, there's You can figure out little niches in any sport to gamble on where you, can, you personally can probably be successful at it. Yeah, you can. Um, mine... I, look, I'll, I'll stick to like NBA. I'll stick to the playoffs, uh, which I'm gambling on now. And uh, uh, of course, I'll bet on all the UFC fights uh, and then the NHL. Um, my bets are laid and uh, Vegas Golden Knights look great, by the way. Um, yes, they are. So uh, that one, that one looks like it uh, could come home for daddy. Um, but go to mybookie.com, promo code drinking bros. Uh, we'll double your deposit. Hopefully, I'll be betting on the Big Ten very, very soon in Justin Fields. Last but not least, we got keeps.com mm. forward slash drinking bros. We got a new one, D'Anthony. Uh, this will help keep the hair you got. That's K E E P S dot com forward slash drinking bros. Dude, I've been doing this test on Ross Patterson Revolution this year. Um, it's amazing. Uh, it, it helps keep the hair you got. So if you're if you're a young man like myself, like 32 years old, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you're worried about your hair someday falling out. Uh, even though I got a salad on me, uh, go to keeps.com forward slash drinking bros and get a concoction. It's a nice little shampoo that you put in your hair yeah. uh, and it'll help keep the hair you got. Three out of four dudes are going bald in this Two life. out of three dudes, eh. which is even, uh, look, it's two out of three men and it usually happens in your 20s and 30s. Yeah, it does, man. And that's why they reached out to us because it's like, oh, you have mostly men in their 20s and 30s. We Correct. should probably be talking that are, that are listeners. Yeah. And it's another one of those deals like you don't have to go to the doctor. Nope. Or any of that nonsense. Yeah. You can you don't need to go to the doctor to diagnose that your hair is falling out. You can just look with your own human eyeballs. Yeah. And avoid paying some doctor a bunch of money for no reason and yep. just get the medication and take it yourself. That's it, man. It's I know we've always said this about Robin. Um, one of the, the greatest mm-hmm. things is that you don't have to go see a doctor. Uh, same with this, man. You don't have to go through the embarrassment and all that shit. Just go to keeps.com forward slash drinking bros today. Mm-hmm. It's free. 30 day trial. Uh, and then if you like it after that, it's 10 bucks a month. It's just like any other yeah, fucking I mean, shampoo. That's 10 it's bucks great. a month is Probably about what I spend on shampoo now. Yeah. So what happened uh, with this one um, was a couple of buddies of mine were using it forever. I was like, what the fuck is that? So I reached out to those guys and I was like, yo. Uh, Then they heard me chatting about it on a show. Uh, They became a sponsor. And um, so far, so good, man. I'm going to try it through the end of the year. Go to keeps.com forward slash drinking bros today and get a free trial of it. Um, Were you watching this? Fernando Tatis uh I was actually last night. Well, I watched the game last night. And let's just recap it. So for the for those of you who didn't see it or didn't see it on ESPN this morning, um, or any of the other sports channels or Barstool did a great the one minute, whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, yeah. What's his name? I don't remember his name. I don't know. The, the, they do like that guy that rants on Barstool about sports stuff. He's yeah. hilarious, but I love that guy. Um, don't always agree with him, but his delivery is really good. At any rate. So Fernando Tatis is up. And by the way, he's one of the hottest players in baseball, one of the most exciting. He's a second generation player. Yep. So he's got all this stuff going on for him. Um, very talented guy. Might become like the next Mike Trout, people are thinking, because he's that talented. He's pretty goddamn good, man. And last night, the Padres are up by seven. Uh-huh. It's the eighth inning. Bases are loaded. It's a 3 0 count. Homeboy fucking lays a fastball in right over the middle of the plate. And Tatis Jr. does what Tatis Jr. does. He fucking raked it. Yeah. He hit it a gajillion miles, grand slam, and now people are butthurt. Like, oh, you know, I thought it was in bad taste. That, uh, like, look, they're, they're talking about unwritten rules in baseball. There's only one rule in baseball. Fucking win. Yeah. That's the rule in any sport, bitch. And it, it, it reminds me of everybody complaining about Saban and Spurrier and all these guys over the years about running up college football scores. If it's a panel voting or if it's 
uh, some kind of algorithm that takes scores into consideration to get you into the national championship. You have to run up every single point you can run up, period. Now, that's not the case in baseball, but this guy's, what, 22 years old? Yeah. You throw a fastball down the middle to a 22-year-old, you expect him to have the discipline to take that point three five. Uh, 0.35 seconds mm-hmm. is what he has to decide whether to swing or not. You expect him to just to take that pitch that's coming right down the middle. No, it looks like a beach ball coming down the middle, and he swings and hits it out of the fucking park. If you don't want that to happen, don't go down 3-0. Yeah. Don't be down seven runs. The end. Like, get fucked with that bullshit. And uh, two, so uh, Ian Gabot threw at Manny Machado after that. For that. So yeah. now you're down... 11 runs. Now you're throwing at people, right? He got suspended three games. The manager got suspended for mm-hmm. a game, obviously, because that's what happens when the pitcher gets thrown out for throwing at people. And rightfully so. Those are rules I like. The rules I don't like are like in the NBA <sighs> with Przingis again last night. I, I hate to be like going over this again, but how is it? How, why would it be a technical foul if a ref makes a bad call? Like, is your, are your feelings as a referee so fucking fragile? That an, an, a guy who's putting everything for his entire life into this single moment right now is upset that you clearly made a bad call, but he's the one that gets penalized because your fucking feelings. The NBA needs to square this shit away. I don't think, I don't think NBA players should be like getting in the rest faces or anything like that. But if if I, <laughs> if you're a baseball player, yeah, not during COVID, but last year, if you're a baseball player and it, and an, and an umpire makes a bad call. You jump in his face. You're like, hey, fuck you, buddy. How about that? And then you get kicked out, and that's the end of it. Yeah. You don't get suspended for fucking 10 games for that shit. The NBA is weak. To, to, to me, like, all this shit is weak. To come after Fernando Tatis Jr. for hitting a fucking ball a mile out of the goddamn stadium that's right over the... Who gives a shit? The point of sports is to score the most amount of runs, points, goals. Mm, whatever it is. Whatever it is. The other team's job is to stop them from doing that. If you can't stop somebody from hitting a fucking home run, you don't deserve to win uh, and you don't deserve to play the game. So fuck them for retaliating for yeah. whatever this stupid the, shit is. But he, here's the thing. It's the pussification of all sports, right? Is, yeah. I didn't want to see it happen in the, the Porzingis shit last night. I didn't want to see it happen in this game. I say because the Major League Baseball ratings are so fucking low. Let them fight. Let them fight like the NHL. Um, give them a fucking, you know. You get, five minute warning. You, you or get kicked it out is. of the game, but that's it. That's you it. don't get suspended for fighting anymore. No. Yeah. Um, let them fight. Let them fucking oh, throw, it, throw it at te- each other. It teaches the kids a, a fucking lesson. What? That we can have some minor scuffle and settle our problems? Yeah. How many times have you been in some kind of argument with somebody that you couldn't be closer to? You guys punch each other in the face a few times, and that's kind of the end of the argument. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's. it's we. It, it's all about the demasculization of our culture in general, I think. That's how we handle things. And people, and Jordan Peterson talks about it all the time. These minor aggressions and conflicts are what prevent major conflicts. Yeah. All this stuff getting settled at the lowest possible level. And frankly, two guys fucking having a shoving match on a baseball diamond, that's a pretty low level. Let's be real here. That whole, th- this whole thing that it's, it's a bad, setting a bad example for the kids. No, it's not. You're setting a bad example for kids. You're telling them that we're so offended by minor microaggressions that we're allow we're going to allow those to build up over time and create massive fucking problems like riots across America. Fuck you. Yeah, man. I all of it like shit. I'll even go back to the Big Ten with Kevin Warren, man. Fuck you for all of this. Like all it all it is, man, is it's it's killing sports yeah. across the board. Like people are losing fucking interest. You're a product. You, you have to realize that in entertainment. Yeah. So you know you have the NBA, which is going through its issues with being too political, right? Uh, you have major league baseball, which has always had its own issues. This mm-hmm. fucking nightmare scenario of, of them trying to play this 60 game season. And what was it? The Cardinals that played like four double they, headers they, last week. They, they missed another game. You're kidding today. Like their game today got uh, postponed so they could do more testing. And uh, I think they're playing four. I know. I think they're playing four double headers next week or something. Or they're playing four more next week or something like that. Who knows? I, I, I the, the whole thing, man, like, if you want people to remain interested in sports, 
you've got to change your fucking psyche regarding all of this shit, uh, fighting fake rules that don't exist, uh, feelings hurt over technical fouls, like all that shit. It's dudes playing sports. That's all it is. Um, yeah. It never used to be like this, and it keeps getting fucking worse. Well, Dave Schoenfeld from uh, ESPN wrote an article today titled, Fernando Tatis Jr. and Juan Soto are breaking baseball's unwritten rules. Isn't it great? It's great. Yes, it is. Sorry. It it's was great. The first time uh, somebody dunked a basketball, it was fucking great. When, yeah. when Dr. J ran down the baseline, jumped, and somehow floated for like 30 feet under the goal and finger rolled it up underneath it, that was great. Yeah. When Steph Curry started shooting from 30 fucking feet beyond the basket, it was fucking great. When Mark McGuire started taking steroids, it was really it was great. great. Let's be real. All these things are great, and it makes your product better. Shut the fuck up and let it happen, dude. The market, this is what capitalism is. The market will tell you, based on the fucking viewership and dollars, what sells. Get this idea that things have to be some kind of fucking pure version of their original selves to be successful. That's nonsense. Yeah. That, is the, that is the fucking absolute antithesis of progress, and you have to be progressing all the time in a fucking enter in the entertainment industry like nobody watches fucking sitcoms anymore and that look that's what sports is it's the entertainment industry that's all it is the only the only league that has completely gotten this right during all of this shit is the nhl yeah. where i mean fuck man uh not only have they had zero tests and all that other shit but the product they're putting out on the ice right now is phenomenal, dude. Um, I watched that five overtime game the other night with mm. the Blue Jackets. Like, it's been great to watch. Um, NHL playoffs uh, have been the big winner, in my opinion, in all of the sports thus far. Besides UFC, uh, mm. UFC, it's hard, man, because you can't. I think Dana White, look, is is a man among boys uh, when it comes to fucking putting sports back on television before yeah. anybody else and, and making exciting fights. The problem is you get into a situation where the card like Saturday, like Saturday, which is kind of a snooze fest to me, you know, I, I dropped 65 on that fucking thing, but it wasn't that fun, man. I, I just, I didn't enjoy it, but he has nothing to do with that. You know, you can't predict that Sean O'Malley is going to fucking break his leg or no, whatever the fuck happens to him. Like, um, so it is what it is, but these other sports, you can control it. Like you can control what's going on. Um, the NHL, again, great job with that. Uh, NBA, I, I've enjoyed watching the NBA thus far, except for the po fucking politics, dude, mm -hmm. which is killing it. So I, I, would, I would highly recommend that everybody uh, look at all of the shit that you're doing in your, your particular sport and, uh, and try to make some changes and corrections. Otherwise... If you're losing viewers doing a during a fucking pandemic when nobody's got anything original to watch, you've got way bigger yeah. problems on the horizon uh, when the you best, actually come back. The best ratings baseball's ever had were during two periods. One was the Maguire Sosa chase, mm -hmm. and the other one was fucking that. What was it? Two thousand two for Barry Bonds. Yeah, yeah, two thousand one. Yeah. Two thousand one yeah. for Barry Bonds. Yeah. Like it was incredible watching him hit home run. He would get. Pitched around the whole game. This guy was getting walked with the bases loaded. Yeah. Right? He would get pitched around. He would see one good pitch per game. And yep. he would hit that motherfucker out of the ballpark every yeah. single time. It's like, come on, man. This is, the, this is what people want to see. And honestly, maybe people cared at some point about the steroid thing. And maybe they don't. Maybe it's just the players that care. Maybe, maybe it's just the older players, not the fucking people. Because, look, I don't know a whole lot of fans that care. No, frankly. And I don't know why you would. I want to see the best possible product. Like if there was something I like watching movies, I like music. Yeah. If there was something you could eject into your body to make you write better music, then I would fucking listen to that person and wouldn't give a fuck. No, it's called heroin, by the way. Uh, <laughs> just saying. I mean, that's what it is. Uh, Bill Hicks used to say, if you're so against drugs and alcohol, go into your uh, into your fucking music room and throw away all those records because Every single person that wrote all of them, real high on drugs. Yeah. Every single one of them. So I think uh, we need to rethink the way sports is looked at. Like, yeah, they're role models for sure, but there's nothing wrong with... Why, why, why is there something intrinsically wrong with taking something that makes you better at what you're doing as a profession? Because in any other profession, that would be fine. Yeah. Other than competitive sports, right? Like we all take fucking... We drink coffee in the morning. 
we take fucking whatever pharmaceuticals we take yeah. for whatever reasons, mood stabilizers and people are fucking sleep, whatever for it is. sleep, yeah. all this shit. We're eating healthy. Like how is, how is that different? I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. I want to see fucking people throwing 6,000 miles per hour. I want to see a guy hit a ball <laughs> to the fuck. I want to, I want to see a guy hit a ball so hard that you can see the fucking sound wave, the overpressure wave come off. Yeah. I want to see that. I don't give two fucks about what they did when Babe Ruth was around. Don't care. <laughs> Look, man, uh, maybe it'll happen one day, but, uh, but I highly doubt it. Um, we'll see here. Jeez. What if we started an all steroid baseball league? Be great. All steroid, everything. Um, just do it up, you know? I well, mean, I mean, really the, go hard on steroids. The players in the NBA were talking about starting their own league for a while. What if they started one and everybody was just juice the whole time? Be great. Wouldn't it be fucking fantastic? How, how high could Giannis and combo jump if he was juiced? Boy, I don't know. I, him throwing people around though would be unfair. Yes. Well, he, it's unfair. That's, that's now, probably, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's probably why they don't do it there. Um, one who, uh, I want to chat about uh, uh, this SEC schedule that came out. Uh, the Bama LSU game um, is scheduled the same weekend as the Masters, which could be shaping up to be one of the greatest uh, weekends of all time. Well, the time. Masters is not going to have fans either now. They're not going to have fans, but uh, I don't, I look, golf, I, I like to watch. I'm, I know I'm in the minority on that. Yes. Um, but uh, I like watching golf. I always have it on the background. It doesn't bother me that fans aren't there. Um, I, truthfully, I don't really even fucking know. No, I don't think for that sport, no one is going to care about no. the fans. Because you can't be too loud anyways. And I've been to the mm -hmm. Masters and all this shit. Going to the Masters is a blast if you're in person and you're doing it. But um, as far as not having fans there, it's not going to affect the tournament. And uh, the tournament will still be rad. But the fact that Bama LSU is on Saturday... And then you got uh, the Masters that entire weekend uh, with the NFL if it stays. What's your prediction on all this shit? Wait, where? Who is uh, Alabama? They're playing LSU, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, LSU is going to get stomped in that game, anyways. Uh, yes, probably. No, not probably. They're probably. They're I want to. I want to see how some of these kids react with with what's going on. Like, um, I, look, it's a lot like the Lakers to me. Because everybody's asked, especially yesterday, after I put that monster bet up in Drinking Bros Sports, of like, hey, man, that's a lot of money to bet against LeBron. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, it's seeing how people interact and are able to play in this bubble type sitch. And uh, I want to see a few games out of these kids to see what's what. Um, as I thought, LSU would have benefited from a delayed season in spring. But uh, let me ask you this. Do you think college football and the NFL make it through? Because I saw yesterday that the Chiefs were going to have fans um, at there, like 20%. There's tickets available for this, uh, for Alabama, Texas A&M, for Alabama, Mississippi yeah. State. Yeah, look, trinketbrostickets.com has got all those tickets, by the way, um, for real. Then we're, we're about $10 cheaper than StubHub. Um, I know there's supposed to be some form of fans at all of these. Cowboys say they're playing with fans. Jerry Jones says they're, they're playing with fans. Um, do you think the NFL and college football, knowing, seeing what happened with uh, major league baseball, yes. right? Cause they're not in bubble. The major league baseball is the only one that's not in a bubble. Do you think they can survive it? Cause I mean, you're in a high contact sport there. I, it depends on what you mean by survive it. Survive it is in get through a week to week schedule like mm -hmm. this and not have, I 85 players test positive. I, I think that uh, the NFL is that they might be uniquely positioned to deal with something like this because injuries are so much more common in that league than they are in other leagues. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I watched you watch Hard Knocks the other night. No. So the new hard, the Hard Knocks just started. It's uh, both LA teams. So they did the Chargers and the Rams. Well, here's the thing: they were supposed to move into that. No new one stadium. cares about either one of those teams, right? It was about the stadium and you know mm. the excitement of the city and allegedly. Um, of what was going to happen and all that shit. Uh, you still have Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Don Donald and those guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, that Herbert kid looks fucking phenomenal in the first episode um, for uh, the Chargers. But um, I watched it and I saw the protocols that they're doing for COVID. I mean, it is next level shit mm -hmm. where you're just like, Jesus Christ, man. I think after watching it, the NFL might make it. I don't know how you're going to stop college kids, though, from fucking partying at college. Because you look at UNC the other day, right? Chapel Hill just came back. Right. Um, they were in school for 
what a week. Um, 165 kids tested positive for COVID and then they shut it down right. and put it all online. Is that going to happen in college football is what I wonder. Um, look, I, if I'm not that I like to necessarily give preferential treatment, but college football is what it is. It's a business. So, um, I feel like none of those kids should be going to any classroom. They should be all doing virtual learning. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, like for, for two reasons, one to make sure the product doesn't get interrupted, but also they're putting themselves in a relatively high risk environment. They're fucking, they're not social distancing. They're clashing. They're sweating on each other, spitting on each other all game long. And when, if you take that back into a classroom, you risk shutting down people's education the same way some asshole and the educational side of it, it risks shutting down the football side of it. Right. So I think you got to remove those two. And that, that sucks for the players, honestly, uh, because I think getting that experience and social environments during an educational type situation is important for becoming a good human being, but it is what it is, man. These are different times. So I feel like, uh, I feel like if they can keep the athletes out of the classroom and just keep them in virtual learning. Yeah. I think they can do it. I hope so. I don't know though. That's the thing is like, you know, I've been seeing some of these colleges that, that have opened up and they're just absolutely raging their faces off. And I don't blame them. I mean, fuck, not only have we been stuck inside for five months, but then you go to college and you're young and you want to fucking rage, have unprotected sex. Yeah. Um, probably even do butt sex a little bit. Um, I, I have a hard time believing that college football players will be able to abstain Maybe. from going out and, and one of those motherfuckers not getting it. Um, Man, it's tough because I want to see – you take a conference like the, the SEC. I want to see all of the top players playing each other. You take that Bama-LSU game, right? Great matchup. Bama-Georgia, I think, is leading off the fucking – SEC schedule if you because they're going all conference right mm -hmm. uh, and same if the Big Ten comes back do the right thing Kevin Warren you fuck um, I want to see all of the top players playing against each other because you know if Mac Jones or or one of those guys from Alabama goes down and then you have to use a backup quarterback against LSU and LSU wins what do you do what is the seating like what does that do to the the, the college football playoffs. Um, it's such a tough call all the way around, but uh, I at least want to give it a go and see what happens. I don't think there's any harm in that. No, it is what it is. But I think uh, a, a big problem is that we as human beings, particularly here in America, just can't be honest with ourselves. Like it, it's, we, we don't like to say harsh realities out loud, right? Like it's, it's been difficult for people over the years to say that the average sentence of somebody that sexually assaults a child is 18 months and that the recidivism rate is about 83 percent because people and it's the same thing with homelessness by the way people feel so i don't even know like they, they feel like there's nothing they can do and it that's frustrating and overwhelming sometimes so they just don't talk about it right right that's not the answer and in the same way this is kind of fucked up but college kids want to drink they want to they want to fuck yeah they're they're at the prime of their fucking uh, testosterone levels, male and female. Yeah. And they want to fucking party and fuck. So that is a reality of the situation. Why then is it immoral in any way to bring in booze and pussy? You're just addressing a reality. If I have <laughs> fucking cancer, you give me chemotherapy, motherfucker. That is just how fucking life works. Not to be binary about it. Not everything is black and white, but in this case it is. Like you're not going to fucking keep 80 to fucking 90 young people satiated without booze and pussy. Right. The end. <laughs> so why, why can't we as a society just admit that that's a reality and say, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to bring in booze and strippers. It's fine. Yeah. We'll, we'll fucking keep an eye out for everybody. We'll keep doctors around in case anybody does anything stupid. We'll fucking test the girls to make sure they don't have AIDS. Yeah. Why is it not that fucking simple? Look, God man. damn it, dude. What are we trying to fucking win a morality <laughs> contest? It's not the 1950s anymore. We're not fighting like atheist Russian communism with your Jesus bullshit anymore. That's not how it is now. Yeah. No one cares about any of that. As a matter of fact, slut shaming is a word now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like it's not okay to talk badly about sluts now, but somehow these fucking 18, 19 year old kids, because of rape culture or whatever the fuck, aren't allowed to express the fact that I want to drink and fuck. That should be a perfectly reasonable thing to say out loud. Hey, Cardi B didn't have a problem with it. Wet ass pussy. Yeah, dude. 
Um, get that wet ass pussy. Yeah, I think wet pussy gang is a thing, right? <sighs> Who knows, man? Ben Shapiro's been getting killed for it all week. The, he uh, said some of the dumbest things I've ever heard a man say in my life. Crazy. Absolutely fucking crazy. Like he tried to make the the statement that his wife, who was an OBGYN, told him that vaginas only get wet if there's a problem. <laughs> That's like saying to somebody, oh, no, it's a good size. Yeah, yeah. No, you're fine. it's a fine size. Sorry, it's That's not a, a fine good size. No, it's not you have at a little, all. You have a little wiener and you can't get your fucking wife wet. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of wet ass pussy in college. Uh, let's get to the drinking bro of the week, shall we? Uh, this one was submitted by this is an interesting name, Canny Lot, mm. K A N I. Um, that's a it's a different name. I don't even know if that's short for anything, to be honest with you. Uh, from Utah, a uh, member of Drinking Bros for four years, is nominating Dave Acosta. Uh, it says Dave was uh, larger than life. And his reach and motivation was global. He dedicated his life to serving others without any expectation or reciprocation. Uh, Dave started his epic lifelong career of service uh, when he first became a North Las Vegas police officer and SWAT team leader, then a deputy at King County Sheriff's Department, where he also served as a counterterrorism expert. He lived a selfless life and was always putting others first and founded nonprofit organizations to help law enforcement and families of fallen officers. He spent his time teaching countless life-changing classes such as women's self-defense and empowerment, situational awareness, kidnap prevention, firearms training, and even free community classes. He developed entire programs for schools and corporations and trained them to defeat active shooters. He wrote his book, Victims No More, uh, so his knowledge could be shared with everyone. Dave passed away July 30th, and we will miss him uh, more than ever, but so grateful for his message and empowerment for so many. He was fearless and went out exactly as he wanted to, doing something he loved. Sending him a nomination up there right now from me. Cheers, fuckers. Uh, cheers. Cheers, Connie. And I, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that, that name incorrectly. I've never seen the name K-A-N-I before, but I'm I sure, like it. Yeah, I'm sure you're pronouncing it wrong, but I don't know what the right one is. So. <laughs> I like how you immediately go to me. Yeah, Ross, I'm, I'm pretty sure you fucked that well, up. Well, I mean, look, so. that's just, you know, that's just how it is. Yeah. It is what it is. It is. Guy sounds dope, though. Uh, it does. Um, look, kids, we uh, we might be in our brand new studio um, this time next week. Yeah, uh, doing a sports show from there. A lot of people have been asking about fantasy football. Yes, we are doing fantasy football, um, but we're trying to push the draft until the uh, uh, last possible moment. Um, obviously, because we heard the NFL got pushed, and some people are still dropping out of the league. Mm. Um, some people are still opting out, so we want to make sure everybody's still in it, try to give you guys the best options possible. Um, obviously, there's no preseason. So, um, you know, it's going to be a, a tough one this year and a, and a wild one, but if, if you win, you, you certainly deserve it. And we'll be announcing all those giveaways and all that stuff here uh, probably next week, and then we'll be doing a mock draft mm. Um either next week or the week after once we get inside the new studio. That way, Giorgio is all hooked up um, and we can get you our teams up on the screen and uh, and go live with you guys. Um, it'd be great to do a call-in show for that. I think we did last year um, as well. So that'd be fu fucking fantastic. So I think we're going to do that as well. Go to mybookie.com, bet with us or against us. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposit on all of the, the games that we talked about earlier. D'Anthony. If um, Craig Delesky calls in again this year and talks about any Miami Dolphins players, nope. I'm going to grab you by your wiener and pull it out a little bit and just thump your nuts. Yeah. And then let it go like a fucking... I don't uh, want to like hear a, about Tua. Like a blind. I don't want to hear about any of that shit. Fuck the Dolphins. They <laughs> suck. And Iowa's not real. So don't don't bring the weak-ass fucking Tua no. bullshit here um, for the Dolphins. Tua will be hurt by week four. Yeah, easily. Uh, like, come he on, might man. be hurt now. We don't even know. Yeah, well, he passed his physical. So we'll Did see. he? Yeah. Yeah, good for him. I still wouldn't put him in a fucking keeper no. league, though. Uh, that's for goddamn sure. For D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. Good night, everyone. Mm -hmm.